Um, next now, uh, back in 2020, the, member, the, the MP John Penrose was commissioned by then-Chancellor Rishi Sunak to write an independent report on how the United Kingdom's approach to competition and consumer issues could be boosted following Brexit. It resulted in a host of policy proposals for the government to implement. But 18 months on, only half of these ideas have either been done or committed to so far. After the reforming zeal of the Trust administration, has this new government come to a juddering halt when it comes to supply-side reform? Is that reforming zeal of the Brexit revolution over? Or could this government take on this challenge after all? Well, I'm delighted to be able to speak now to John Penrose, the MP for Western Supermare, who has, uh, of course, carried out these, uh, th th this report, or carried out this report back in 2020. You've done an update now. You're calling it Unfinished Revolution, because so many of these recommendations haven't been taken on. What's your assessment in terms of whether or not the government is willing to look at doing perhaps some of the harder kind of reform work to get this country moving? Well, Tom, absolutely right. It is a crucial question. And the, I, I think the, the auguries are good, the signs are good, because it was, as you said in your introduction, it was Rishi Sunak who asked me to do the original report when he was Chancellor of the Exchequer. Now he's in number 10 Downing Street. He ought to be perfectly positioned to take the rest of it forward. So I have my fingers firmly crossed. But the, the, the proof of the pudding will be in the eating. It's a question of what he's going to do. You know, we, we've had the first six weeks or so, um, and he's managed to steady the ship. That's great. Now's the time to get radical. Now's the time to use that stability, and particularly because the supply side reforms, the things that unblock the arteries of Britain's economy, they don't cost very much money. They are, sorry about the cat, um, they, are, they don't cost very much money, um, and at the moment money is scarce, and that means that we have, it, it's, a, it's one of the obvious things to do. Today, looking at the Edinburgh reforms that the Chancellor will be announcing, these are things that aren't going to cost any money at all, but could free up a lot of money to be invested uh, in our country. Is that a sign of things to come? Well, I hope so, and it's a really good example of precisely the kind of reform that we need to have. So I'm really pleased to see it. I mean, obviously, the, the devil will be in the detail. We'll have to make sure that it, it, it pays off. But the, the good thing about it is, if that is the first of many, then that's, uh, you know, that's exactly what we want to see. But we need to see those Edinburgh reforms happening not just in the financial services sector, but in dozens of other sectors across the rest of our country too, whatever the versions are for energy or for water or for anything else. We've got to see all those equivalents happening as well. And, and that's what we need to see being, being rolled out in different sectors over the course of the next few months. And a number of other sectors. These are Brexit inspired uh, liberalisations. These are things we can do because we've left the auspices of the, of the rules of the uh, European Union. Uh, but there are some things that we can do that were nothing to do with the European Union, particularly when it comes to our planning framework here in the United Kingdom. And I understand you've got an, you've got an amendment to the levelling up and regeneration bill uh, that, that, that's. Uh, all about making it easier to sort of densify our cities. So Michael Gove has done some really good stuff so far. There's a lot of good things in the levelling up bill to do with um, not just uh, not, not just getting rid of some planning targets, but also making it easier for people to cooperate with their neighbours um, and come up with something called street votes. It basically means you can you can add an extra story or two onto your house if you if all your neighbours sort of sign up to it and you all reckon that you. Can, can do the same changes and you all want to do the you know, add those extra stories but what i'm suggesting is a bigger version of that to say look uh, if we can make it easier for everybody who lives in a town and um, who's you know, who, who owns a home to uh, add extra extra height up to sort of two three or four stories maybe that's all it's the, the equivalent of a townhouse in other words you can end up with really beautiful towns and cities right the way across the country. You can add a huge amount of extra housing space in our country. And that will mean that not only do existing homeowners um, get a benefit of a, of a more valuable home, but also as, those ex as that extra space gets built, it should mean that housing gets an awful lot cheaper, either to rent or to buy, for anybody under 40. And at the moment, they're the ones who are really struggling to afford homes. So this is, this is aiming to, to unblock that, to, to free it up, to let that happen. And if we can make those changes now, um, then it could make a huge difference to, to, to the affordability of housing uh, right the way across the country um, for, you know, for generation rent. 
It is remarkable sort of how much space there is above our heads rather than uh, spreading out into perhaps uh, those, those counties that perhaps don't want to see green fields uh, built over. I, I believe I'm right in saying that if London had the same sort of density as Paris, if we had sort of, you know, townhouses that were four to six storeys tall rather than one to two storeys tall, we'd be able to fit double the population in. Um, how likely do you think it is that, that the government is going to take you up on this particular amendment? Well, they've already accepted the basic idea because they've already agreed to this thing I was mentioning before called street votes, which is a kind of a mini version of what I'm suggesting. So the principle's already in the bill. Um, and so what I'm suggesting to, to Michael Gove and to other, uh, other um, colleagues is, look, if, if we think this is a good idea, why not go a bit further? Why not sort of, you know, add a, add a bit of chocolate on top um, and give everyone a bit of a bonus at the same time? Well, we'll follow the progress of that amendment very, very closely. But for now, John Penrose, thank you so much for joining us here on The Briefing this morning. Really, really interesting stuff there.